Wednesday evening, everybody. Gonna have uh, Pastor Keaton Clark gonna be on here in just a few minutes, so give me like a minute. Just send me an invite there. I'll be on the God bless everybody this evening. Hope the Lord's moving in your life and doing really good for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. How you doing, brother? All right. Good, brother. How are you? How's God moving in your life today? Amen. Amen. It's been good. Amen. God is good. Yes, sir. Got a great picture there. Everything looks good, so hallelujah. Amen. What did you have? What do you have on your mind, Lord? I'd like for you to to talk about this evening. What would you like to be talking about? Well, um, just like we were talking about earlier, we were talking about the movie. Oh, Uh, the movie that, uh, yeah, it's been on our hearts, so. Yeah, the perfect name, I think, was was deciding on it, or whatever you decide on, but I think it's called Hope Becomes, because it sounds like an inspirational story of your childhood yeah. and how God has brought you up to this far, and it's going to be a great thing. Right, that's it. And I believe that God will help you to get the right to story writer, that it'll, it'll work out perfectly like you needed to. So... Amen. Yeah. And, you know, God, things like that does work out because the Lord works out all things out. And when it does, then it'll be like a transpiring story to help a lot of young uh, people, uh, you know, and a lot of people around the world because everybody's looking for hope. And that's why it's called Hope Becomes. And it's it's a transpiring story written by Keaton Clark and played by Keaton Clark. And, uh, co-owned by Keaton Clark, and so it's going to work out. I believe it's going to be a great movie. I believe there'll be a lot of people who go to the box office and watch it. I believe there'll be a lot of people buying it, and I believe it's going to work. And so, you know, you went through a lot of uh, transitional times from the time that you went to your, uh, you know, uh, you was in uh, like a boy's home, and, uh, you know, you went through a lot of uh, different things in your life. And then God helped you to, to make it through there because that was a trying time for you. And the loss of your, you know, being separated from your parents was a uh, a very trying time for you at that point in your life. And then God has brought you up until now. And so that's what's going to, it's going to be called Hope Becomes. And that's a perfect uh, landing name for it, I believe. And I believe it's going to work out. And I like, you know, how everything you told me about, you know, your childhood and then, you know, not long after you've gotten out and got back on your feet and the Lord has blessed you, then the devil struck with yes. your mother, you know, a couple of years back and, uh, you know, and tried to take you out that way. But now you're going to college to become a pastor and you're going to have an ordination uh, back pretty soon. And so the Lord's moving you to a new height and new level with the. Uh, your new uh, education coming up and your new your new thing that the Lord's blessing with. And so that's the reason why I believe this, this movie will be great because it's going to be called Hope Becomes. And so it's going to be a new transpiral transfer. You know, it's going to transpire you and it's going to uh, transpire a lot of people around. It's going to make a difference with a lot of people around the world. Yeah. And um, what I thought about when... Uh, we began to imagine this movie and think about the lives that it would touch and what God would do through it. It's just amazing to see um, the way the Christian movies come about, the different ideas that people have, and 
you know, for me, I never thought growing up that I would be in the movie business, that I would uh, even be able to talk to anybody from Hollywood. And, you know, when I came across uh, David A.R. White, he was a um, very generous man from, from the God's Not Dead movies. If you guys have seen God's Not Dead, he's in all four of the movies. Um, he is actually the founder of Pure Flix, which is an amazing Christian organization for pure movies, um, movies that are good for your children to watch, that are good for your family to watch, that are good if you have great moral beliefs. And so we are, I'm excited because, uh, you know, to have him help me out with this movie if he accepts the request is uh, w would be an honor and would be amazing. And, um, you know. I know that my life story, it has, it's touched like so many people uh, just throughout the web and just throughout uh, my, me sharing my personal testimonies with people and reaching out to people uh, all over the web on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all these um, different social media platforms that we have. And so it's really amazing to see that. But I know God put it in my heart for me to have my story spread out around the world and to reach many people because uh, I, the way I see it is this the way I see a movie going out to many is this and these Christian movies they're not just going on purely because they're not just going on Christian uh, Christian based organizations or platforms they are being played in movie theaters where many different people all around the world with many different beliefs, many different outlooks on life, they would go to the movie theater and they would see this movie, they would see the name of it, Hope Becomes, or they would see God's Not Dead, or they would see some kind of movie where it would just attract their attention. And I think that the title that we have, Hope Becomes, is going to attract people's attention. They're going to be like, you know, through all that we've went through in this world, through all that we went through in our country, and through all that we have struggled in, and we were kind of looking for some hope. And so, and then there's an, so that's one of the ways I look at it is that God would reach many people throughout the nations, throughout the world that need hope. So that's the first thing I would say that I really am excited about with this. And then another thing would be is what if there's a kid out there, which I know there is, that is going through a hopeless situation like I was, that was taken away from their family, their family struggled with drugs, their family struggled with partying and different lifestyles that weren't of God. And what if they went and they got to see this movie and they were like, you know, this guy went through the same thing that I went through and he's given me hope because the, our, our foundation should be this. It shouldn't just be hope because we could find hope in so certain other things. But the only way that we will find true hope and true satisfaction is through Jesus Christ. And so that is our main foundation. That's, that should be our main story line is that hope was found through Jesus Christ for me to fulfill my destiny, for me to fulfill my purpose. And there are many people searching for hope right now. And we just want to be able to broadcast that out to them. So yeah. that's what I'm looking forward with this movie. And I know it's going to take time. I know it's going to take resources. I know it's going to take the right connections and the right people. But I know that God has put it in my heart. So whatever God starts in your life, whatever he puts in your heart, he's going to bring it to completion is what yes. his word says. So we're you know, number one, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. And I believe that, you know, uh, this movie called Hope Becomes is going to be a inspirational for a lot of people through a lot of different situations. As they were growing up, they're going to look at their childhood and realize, hey, you know, if this guy can, can make a movie about his situation – and tell his story, then we can do the same thing because that's what it's about. It's about telling your story, right. and it's about bringing hope and inspiration to others because then they know there's hope through Jesus Christ, and that's why hope becomes an inspiration from your movie and from your story and from anything, any kind of literature that you ever write from it, it's going to become perfect. And I believe that God's going to use this in a mighty way for his, his glory, and I believe you'll become the victor of this, this movie that's going to come out because... We're talking about it, but we know it's going to come out because we're speaking by faith right now that God's going to help somebody somewhere that's got a lot of, of back and pull to help you get this movie up in front. And I believe God can help you do it. And I believe that God can help help you get the right yeah. uh, actors and everything else that will fall in place. That'll be uh, pretty close to what happened to you because, you know, you were drugged through the mud. 
for a time and season. But joy cometh in the mm-hmm. morning as has been an inspiration of your life. You know, you're talking about Psalms 30, verse 5, that, you know, weeping endureth for a, a little while, but joy cometh in the morning, you know. And so right. I believe that's a lot of things going to help you with this new movie called Hope Becomes. And it's a lot of people need to realize that Jesus Christ yes. out there, you know, is with them through whatever situation that they went through in their childhood. Maybe they have an old hurt, but God can cancel the old hurt out and he can bring joy in the morning to you no matter what situation that you went through. And this is about your, your story, not just about me telling about this this evening, but I believe it, it helps to add to something sometimes whenever you see a, ne- a necessity and a need to talk about something, then we can bring some light to it and we can help a, a dying and a caring world, a, a dying world out there and be a, a caring soul for them with hope and, hope and inspiration. So hope becomes. Yeah. It's, what it, it's, it's a movie yeah. yeah so i love what i love what we were just talking about um you mentioned psalm 30 and verse 5 and that's been um, a message of hope for me and it's been a message of hope for so many others that weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning so it's what, whatever we're facing in our current situation and in our current struggles, God is saying, hey, if you'll just bear with me, if you'll just stay faithful and know that I am God, be still and know that I am God. That's exactly what another verse in the Bible says. Be still and know that I am God. Hey, I'm going to bring joy. I'm going to bring hope. I'm going to bring peace. And see, you know, I got to, I got to really experience this in life because... As a young boy, when I was taken away from my family, I didn't know God. I didn't know anything about Jesus. I didn't know all, any of that. So I was just a young boy. I didn't really know anything. And so it was a very hard time. You know, like you said, I was kind of drugged through the mud for so many years. And, you know, but then God stepped in and God said, okay, this boy is mine. This is my child. And I'm going to give him a story. I'm going to give him hope. I'm going to give him a future, as the Bible says. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, one of my favorite scriptures. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, but plans to give you a hope and a future. And so when we look at this scripture, when we look at the story behind it and the context, and we see that the Israelites were going through a very difficult time, a very hard season of life, and they were being drunk through the mud. Life was not easy when that verse was written and when that verse was spoken because we have to go through pain. We have to go through difficulties. We have to go through hard times in order to get to our purpose. And that is what that is what this movie is about. See, now... I want you to hear this, the the title that we came up with again. When you when you said it, I was like, I thought about this just now. The title of the movie is not Hope Is, because if hope is, then there's no reason to have faith. There's no reason to believe. But when we know that hope becomes that we're going to we're going to go through some hell, we're going to go through some pain, we're going to go through some hard times. We're going to be drugged through the mud in seasons of life, but those hard, low seasons in life where we feel like crap and where we want to give up and where we want to set, say, I'm done with life, that is our great, that is the greatest moment of life that is preparing us for the testimony that God has for us. And see, I realize that now as I look back and I say, you know what, God, you brought me through all these things. I was in a lot of low times in life, but guess what? Now God has blessed me with a car. He's blessed me with going, being able to go to school and become a pastor, which is going to be a part of the movie. And God has blessed me with all these things. And if we're faithful with the little, see, I want to talk to somebody that's on here today. You, you, you seem that you've lo- It seems that you have no hope. It seems that you want to give up. It seems that you're at a low point in life. Let me tell you today, don't give up. Hope is becoming in your life. Hope is becoming. There may be weeping right now. There may be no joy right now, but hope is coming in your life. Joy is coming in the morning. 
peace is on its way. Whatever difficulty you're going through right now, stay faithful. Keep trusting God. We serve a living God. We serve the God that created the universe. We serve the God that holds the world in his hands. Your situation that you're going through today is no match for what God can do. Come on, somebody. Hope is becoming in your life. I declare that right now over your life. Hope is becoming. Peace is on its way. Joy is on its way. Amen. Joy cometh in the morning. Peace, love, and joy is coming. Because from God's word, Amen. we find peace, we find love, we find joy, we find healing, we find strength. We find renewing of our minds. Yeah. So we like the end of, we like the end of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so, you know, as you went through all That's these it. different things that you went through, and it was hard times, but God is going to see you through, and he will, with your going to uh, college to be the pastor, and God's going to help you to set up a church, and God's going to grow your church. And so greater is he that's in you than he that's in yeah. the world. Because he that's in the world is not right. that great. But he that's in you is greater. Jesus Christ lives on the inside of you. So yeah. greater is he that's in, in you than he that's in the world. And he's going to help you because we right. find that he, he has the key to the kingdom. He's going to give us the key to the kingdom so yeah. that we can enter. Because no man goes to the Father but through Jesus Christ. And with your st your story and your hope, you're going to lead a lot of young people and a lot of people to Christ that's never, ever knew about Jesus Christ. And it's going to show them because when Amen. you show something to somebody about hope and about peace, about joy, then more people will come to Christ through that. And that's the reason why there's Christian movies is to become hope and inspirational for others out there so they can see the hope and the joy because without hope, there's a lost and a dying world that's hopeless. And if they're hopeless, then they think, then they think they're right. not worth anything. But you're worth a lot with Jesus Christ because he loves you. Yeah. And so I believe God is growing yeah. you as a pastor. I seen that when I first met you three years ago. I said, God, I see this young man down there in Houston. I saw you in a park down there. You were compelling other young people to Christ. Amen. Then you went to a pastor's house, Pastor Doss's house. Amen. Y'all set up a church inside of there. Amen. And yeah. God began to bless you after that. I met you that away. And then you came up and spent time with me. And, you know, and I prayed with you about a lot of different situations in your life. I believe that God is moving you forward from our prayers because he answers our prayers. God answers your prayers. I want everybody to know that God will answer your That's prayers. It. When you pray to the Lord, he said, ask and you shall receive. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. So I want everybody out, out there to start yes. having hope, peace, love, and joy. Because Jesus Christ will come in, he'll wash you, he'll cleanse you, and he'll set you free. And who the Son has set free is free indeed. And not the death, hell, or grave is going to come against you. Because God's going to lift you to a new height and a new level. Amen. And he's going to turn your situation around because that's what he does. Amen. Hallelujah. We serve a loving, a kind. Those that Praise wait God. upon the Lord are going to find new strength. We're going to mount up like wings of eagles. Like on wings of eagles. They're going to run and not grow weary. They're going to walk and not faint. Yes. That's the word of God. Amen. And so this, this move. So amen. let me. I believe it's going to be a good inspiration. Go ahead, brother. Let me. Let me rewind and talk about what you just said. You quoted Matthew 6, 33. We were talking about this last night, and even we were listening to a sermon about it, and I remember that. Um, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these other things will be added to you. I want to give somebody some hope today and in that as well. Um see uh, a lot of time a lot of the time in my life when I was when I was when I was poor and I was without nothing and I was broke I remember those times um, and I remember them clearly and I remember asking God God why can't I have more why don't I have this why don't I have a car why don't I have uh, a place to live right now I was going I was in hopeless times I was moving from place to place. Amen. 
And as I look back now, I remember when I would move from place to place and I would I would look at my life and I would say, this life sucks. Like it's it's hopeless. It's meaningless. Those are the times that I wanted to throw in the towel. And I was already a believer. I was already following Christ. And I remember that verse. I said, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to start seeking yeah. God's kingdom. And I'm going to believe. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. I want to I want to finish this. And I'm going to believe that when I seek God's kingdom, when I when I read his word, when I pray to him, no matter how much hell I'm going through, no matter the difficult time I'm going through, I'm going to seek his kingdom. And then God spoke to me as I began to seek his kingdom after months and as I began to seek God's kingdom more and more. God spoke to me and he said, he actually said this through a prophet. He said, you're going to have a car soon. And that was a couple of years before I got the car that I have now and the other cars that I had that I uh, had bought and traded in. And that was years before that. And so you got to think of how long I had to go without a car. And I was walking. I was getting rides to church. I was getting rides from everywhere. And, you know, in those moments of the of those couple of years that I had to wait on God to give me a car, I kind of got mad. I was like, God, why haven't you given me a car yet? God, why haven't I seen the money coming in? Why haven't I seen what you promised me? And also, let me rewind back to this. When I when I when I had heard from God and he had spoke that to me through the prophet, the prophet also said that you're going to become you're going to have a time in your life where you're going to become wealthy for a moment. You're going to become very wealthy for a moment. And so then I heard from, I heard from that, heard that confirmation from God. And so it, it had been a couple of years that it went by and I was hopeless. I was like, what the heck, God? Like, why haven't you done this yet? It's been years. He said it was going to be soon. See, sometimes when God says soon, sometimes when God says that he's going to do something soon. It's in his timing. It's not in our timing. So soon to God, it could be a couple of years, right? So it was a couple of years. And so then I came to this point in 2020, at the beginning of 2020. Um, at the beginning of 2021 is when my mom passed away. So I actually was at the end of 2020, and I was believing God. God, 2021 is going to be the best year of my life. 2021 is going to be prosperous. 2021 is going to be amazing. And then when I got to the beginning of 2021, Brother Ted and everybody watching, that's when my mom had passed away. That's when hope went from being a low amount of hope to no well, hope I went at all. To the battle. I went into What's the battle and prayed for you, Mo, at that time and began to pray for you because, and then I saw you, I saw you start to sink a little bit and you started backsliding. And I said, Lord, I know that he's only went into the wrong area. He's not totally out of anything, Lord. It's just the devil is just trying to say he's not going to make it. But I said, Lord, I know that Pastor Keaton is going to come back. He's going to come back strong. So every time I saw a Pastor Joel on there, I would type your name in so that you would go over there and watch Pastor Joel because I said, you know, Lord, I want somebody in Pastor Joel's church to pray for him, and I want God to move in a mighty, steadily way, and I believe that God did because then I started seeing a turnaround. All of a sudden, yeah. I began to see you coming back yeah. into Christ. I saw a turnaround in your life, and you started coming back to Christ more and more. Yeah. Not that you were too far out because all you have to do is one prayer changes everything. One so prayer changes continue. everything. And so when you ask the Lord, let me uh, let me continue from that point I was at. So when I was so we, yeah, I want to get to what you just said because I came back. So when I lost all hope, I was like, you know what? I got so mad at God and I forgot. I for, I said, forget everything. You know, I'm gonna go do my own thing. And I went and did my own thing for a while. I got into some uh, drinking and I, I just started doing some things that I wasn't supposed to do. And I knew I wasn't supposed to do it, but I, I was like, you know what, God, I'm gonna hurt you because. You hurt me, so I'm going to do all these bad things because I know when I sin, it, it upsets you. And so that's what I did. That's how mad I got at God. And so then I came to this point of when I, I lost everything again. I was um, I had lost the place that I li I was living in for a year, and I was um, pretty much asked to leave the place. 
and I had just been doing the wrong things and making the wrong decisions. And then I had I had gotten asked to leave the plate. And then I came to that point where I was like, you know what, God, if you'll help me, if you'll do what you said you would do, and you'll get me to the right place, then I will follow you again. I will I will repent of my sins. And I began to repent right there because God spoke to me in that moment. He said. Come back to me. Let me do. Let me show you how to live this life. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult, but I'm going to show you how to do it. And so then God spoke to me in that moment and said that. And then I began to repent of my sin. I began to turn towards him. And so then we go into this lawsuit after my mom had passed away. I forgot to mention this. We went into this lawsuit, right? And so then this lawsuit had went on for about a whole year. And this had been... Months later, had I given my life back to Christ and walked back into the church and started serving him again. And so when I started serving him again, I started seeking him. I, you know, it had, been, it had been a whole year before I saw anything come to fruition that he spoke to me those couple of years before that. And so once the lawsuit went through, we got this settlement for a million dollars. It doesn't matter. I could say the number on here now because all the money is pretty much done away with and some of it's in savings i don't have to tell you how much is savings i don't have to tell anybody right but this is a testimony so we had gotten the settlement for a million dollars and so my sister got some i got some my dad got some and then i saw god what he spoke to me those couple years ago he said you were going to be what you're going to be wealthy for a moment and so that's when i became wealthy for a moment and i i remember when i got this money i had I immediately went in the wrong direction again. I immediately started spending money on things that I shouldn't have, starting doing things that I shouldn't. And I was in a downward spiral. And then God spoke to me when I got, when I had done it for a while, and He was like, "Hey, you need to come back again. You need to you need to let me help you because I was making so many wrong decisions. Like I was buying different cars that I knew that I wasn't going to be able to pay for in the long run." And so I had traded those cars in, and luckily this last car that I had, you know, it got totaled in everything. So that was actually God telling me, hey, that's not the car for you. And so now I have this new car, and I had repented again. I had to come back to Christ again. And so this time when I came back to Christ, I was like, you know what, God? Everything out there in that world is crap. It's nothing. It's no good for me. Because my only hope and my firm foundation is Jesus. And so now I'm going to follow you with my whole life. Because I know you have a great purpose for me to fulfill. You have a movie for me to make. You have a school for me to go to. Now I'm walking in my purpose. And now I'm going to follow you. And you're going to show me how to live this life. And no matter how hard it gets, I'm not going to walk away. But I'm going to stay consistent. I'm going to stay persistent in your word and walk in the ways that you have called me to walk in and it's been difficult it hasn't been easy and it's been hard but i've been able to be a blessing to many others and that is one of the things that i do now because i remember the moments that i was poor i remember the moments that i was broke and that i was without a place to live and now i have all these things that god has given to me as a gift and it's not because of what i did but it's because of what he did and the testimony that he's given me and see I get to help other people now. I get to pay for people in the drive through line behind me. I get to go and help somebody pay pay their rent, or I get to go and help somebody move. I get to go and do these things now and work and do things for the Lord. And so what I want to say this, I want to say this, because I know I know we should get off soon because um, the time's running short, but um, I want to say this. God used my mom's death. The enemy meant it for evil. So the enemy, he meant it for evil. He meant it to destroy me. He meant it to destroy my family. But God turned it around and he used it for his good. And see, what I, I don't know I don't know what somebody on this live stream that's watching it now or is going to watch it later, maybe you're in a situation like I was where you had lost someone or where you are in a difficult place and you feel like it's all for your wrong. It's all for the bad. Let me tell you what, the enemy may have raised up raised up and tried to use some weapons against you, but God is ra- God is getting God is getting ready to raise up a mighty standard against him and he's going to turn around everything that has harmed you for your good, yeah. like he did for me. And so that's what this movie's about, is that God can take your life, no matter the hell you've been through, no matter the mistakes you've made, no matter what you've done, and he can spiral you back into the good, into the plan that he has for your life. So that's what this story is going to be about. Hope uh, is becoming. Amen. 
Amen. And I'd say, you know, be looking for the movie because eventually it's going to be coming out in the box office sometime because I believe that God's going to help this to transpire and you're going to get the right, the movie writers and everything's going to be the great. It's like God wants it to be. Well, God bless everybody. Thank you, Brother uh, Keaton. Amen. Pastor Keaton, and uh, God bless you. Congratulations to you and your new uh, found thing that God's going to do for you to help you get your pastorship for the church. Amen. And this college is going to be going. God bless you. Take care. Amen.